So I read book number five out of my 10 books in 10 weeks challenge. This week book was Maynard's House by Herman Raucher. I think he, it's his only horror book that he's ever written. Um, but yeah, I think uh, still I'm kind of interested in what Mr. Raucher has in store uh, with his other books, even if it's his only horror book, as I've said. Um, so the book is a um, slow burn story. Uh, again, same thing as previous book, uh, you know, Burnt Offerings. Oh, it's a really slow burn here. It gradually builds up to a climax to the end, uh, towards the end of the book, which is really amazing actually it was well done in here so the story it's a bit of a haunted house thing but cabin in the woods type of deal with evil entities it's kind of a folk horror story there's witches involved in it it's psychological yeah there's a lot of stuff to unpack from that book. It's a lot of things at once. Um, and the story evolves into, it's a quite complicated story and it evolves into that, you know, big climax towards the end, as I said. Uh, it also reminds me of the slasher flick, you know, of the start of the 2000, like Scream or I Know What You Did Last Summer, in the way that you're trying to figure out who's responsible for everything. It's not a slasher thing. There's not, there's no violence in the book. There's no gruesome murder. There are quote unquote murders, but they're not gruesome or anything. But all the time that you're reading the book, you're always trying to figure out who's responsible for stuff that are, that is happening within the book to our main character, whose name is Austin. Uh, so the house is called Maynard's house because um, uh, Austin is a Vietnam veteran and he's back from the war. Uh, he, his only friend died in the war and his only friend was Maynard. And Maynard uh, wrote a will giving the house to Austin. Uh, and it's called Maynard's House for a reason. That is going into spoiler territory, so I'm not gonna go into that. Even at all in that video, I don't want to spoil anything towards the end. So there are going to be spoilers in that second half of the videos, but mild spoilers. I don't want to spoil it too much because I think that you should definitely read it because the end is so you don't see the end coming that much and it's just you know it kind of takes you by a surprise and you kind of figure out like everything towards that end so i'm not gonna talk too much about that uh but i talked about two uh, characters and there's other two main characters also uh, there are like five or six characters to the book I don't want to talk too much about all characters. I'm just going to um, stay with these four characters. So the other two characters are uh, Minawikis, kind of fairies in a way, you know, they're depicted kind of as fairies in the book, which I really liked again, going into that more folkish story. Uh, so the two Minawikis are two children's brother and sister. Era is um, the little girl, which is at some point she's like 16, but towards the end he thinks that she's more like 11 or 12, something like that. And he, her little brother, Froom, who's throughout the book is always like eight years old. Uh, but Ara kind of shifts ages. At some point he thinks that she's more than just a little girl, that she might be like in her 20s or 30s even and she's just portraying a little girl or something like this so yeah the book kind of start off like a haunted house well haunted cabin in the woods because it 
even though it's a house, it's kind of a really small house since it's like 400 years old or something like that. So it's, you know, an old small house that contains like two or three rooms in it. And that's about it. So yeah, it's a really small house that has like three or four rooms. Uh, you have the cellar, root cellar, that in the basement where food is stocked and tools and so on. Then you have like the main room, uh, bedroom and the attic. And that's about it. A small attic that, you know, is not really habitable. Uh, but yeah, so it's a haunted house, haunted cabin type of book. Um, I really liked, you know, how it really slowly builds up. It's kind of the same that um, than burnt offerings, meaning that, you know, not a lot of things happen, not a lot of real scary things, you know, everything that happens before the end is kind of easily explainable, but just because of how fragile the mind of our main character is, like he's always thinking that the ghosts are doing bad witches and weird creatures and so on. Uh, because the guy has PTSD from the Vietnam War. And I really enjoy that it's not used as a scare tactics here. <clears throat> you know, sometimes in horror, uh, tropes like that could have been used as uh, to pump up the scares or something like that. But I like that here. It's kept just as, you know, we never n truly know what's real and what isn't just because of how fragile the mind of our main character is uh, which i really liked once again i think it was cleverly done here the only thing i didn't really enjoy in the book is that none of the characters are likable none of them so it it could have been a masterpiece in my mind that book could have been just a masterpiece but just yeah, there's just this that, to me, I didn't feel as much attached to the book as I should maybe, just because of, you know, none of the characters are likable. Like, nobody is likable, not even our main character. He's kind of a douchebag to anybody around him. So we're going to go into spoilers territory. So if it piqued your interest, you know, just what I said about the book here, um, pause the video, go read the book, then maybe come back a bit later. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> it's kind of an interesting uh, book actually. So now with the spoilers, uh, as I said previously, it's going to be mild spoilers. I'm not gonna spoil the ending because you need to read it for yourself too really fully understand the book and so on. And it's a short read. I, I mean, I've read the book in two sittings. It's uh, 200 pages or so, like it's a real, rather short story. Um, but yeah, um, so the book is kind of, uh, yeah, without, exactly saying the end the book is kind of a cyclical thing you know if you've played like the dark soul series or something like this it reminded me of that you know being it uh, it's kind of a wheel that turns and no matter your choices it's always going to come back you're always going to come back to um, the start of it uh, a little bit changed but still you know the wheel is still going to turn without any effect to the house itself. So portraying to the house in here. Uh, it reminded me of a short story by Stephen King. I don't remember the story. If any of you remember, you know, what is the story, please comment down below because I want to read that story again because it reminded me of that. Uh, you know, there's a couple who's reliving their the accident that killed them uh, and they're living that for eternity. So it's kind of the... Uh, it's hell, you know, portrayed by Stephen King, essentially. And it reminded me of that book a little bit because in that book, it's kind of same thing. It, 
it's kind of as if Austin is trapped in this hell and try trapped to relive relive that hell on and on uh, like the death of his friend going to the house and meeting up with everybody again and again and again so I'm not really spoiling the end because you'll see how it comes to that um, that being said you don't also you never know the extent of the witch's power you and you don't know who even if there's a witch or if it's a ghost or whatever you never fully grasp like the full potential of the being i think the being is the house but it kind of portrays itself in the witch and the minawikis and the bears and the deer and you know all the wildlife around the house around the cabin i might be mistaken uh, but i feel like you know there's not really entity to the book it's more just yeah, yeah in his mind the hell that he con that he built uh, for himself or whatever uh, because that's the whole point of the book you never know what's true what isn't true you never really figure out what's going on with the book and i think that's its biggest point of the book is that the question of reality like questioning the reality if you're alone in a cabin do you fully exist or are you just kind of a remembrance of others or just a shadow it's yeah it raises a lot of question about reality which i really liked i just hope that it would have go just a tiny bit further into that aspect of reality that being said i might be <laughs> forgetting some stuff from the book uh, just because it's kind of dense uh, I feel like this author is a very smart author once again and I feel like I'm kind of maybe a bit behind of on all the aspects of this story uh, but that being said yeah I really did enjoy the book I don't know if I'm gonna read that book again just because of the characters not being likable and I think it's a shame because otherwise, you know, the rest of the book is just so amazing. It's just so well written. Um, you don't see the end coming that much. You kind of do, but don't at the same time, which I once again really enjoyed. Uh, just because you kind of figure out that he's kind of, pardon me, but fucked. Yeah, he's screwed from the get-go. Like, the house don't want him there. And he knows it, but he's unable to escape, like never because of the promise made to his friend. And also Maynard seems nice, but by the end of the book, you're like wondering if he's responsible for everything that happens in the book. If he knew about it, just because of the end, once again, you kind of think that, yeah, I think Maynard's not a nice guy in the end, so. Uh, but that being said, on with my rating, uh, definite thumbs up, you know, definite read. That was an interesting read. I think you should read it if you enjoy folk stories with, yeah, I want to say ghosts. I think there are ghosts in the hair. Yeah. At one point, yeah, near the end, yeah, he's actually, he's actually seeing ghosts so yeah i think there are ghosts in that book uh creatures i don't fully understand if it's really a witch or if it's an entity maybe a god or something like this that lives through the house because there are all these stories linked with it but yeah definite thumbs up go read the book it's a definite read so that was this week book, uh, next week is going to be Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Uh, I'm not reading the entirety of the book. Actually, I'm only reading uh, just uh, the story, Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which is like 30 pages long. Uh, I started reading it this morning and I'm already midway through. I re read the book for like 30 minutes or so and I'm already 
midway through what I plan on doing with uh, Sleepy Hollow, maybe do a, sim a small comparison between movie and stories, because as I said, Sleepy Hollow is my favorite Halloween movie. It's my go-to uh, movie every Halloween. Uh, so I'm gonna re uh, rewatch the movie after I'm done reading it. I already took some notes here and there. I don't know if we'll see my notes here, but I've already taken just a small page of notes comparing, you know, what I remember from the movie and what I'm reading in the book. But I think that's what I'll do. Also, um, as a, I'll do a review, you know, what I like best, book or a short story or movie and so on. Um, so that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. Peace out.